hi, I'm back. <laughs> like a bad sitcom, right? Anyways, I just was checking out some of the questions and somebody had been texting me. Um, just quickly, you know, if I could just tell what the prints are about and stuff. The prints average about $29 each. Um, and then there's shipping. And you can fit more than one print in a tube. And most people order a couple because it saves on shipping or they order them together. Sorry, I don't know which way I'm supposed to be looking at with this camera thing. Um, so the two things, the prints will be up on the site in about an hour. I just haven't had time. I just picked them up yesterday and I like to pick them up and make sure that they're right first before we uh, post them on the site, just that you know I could get a whole batch of prints that aren't printed backwards like happened one time and that was, I'd take them all back again. All the ones that had the tax had to go back. So the prints average about $29. They're quite big, they're like 34 inches or 36 inches tall and they are meant for image transfers. You can't just take them and go photocopying them at Staples because you will be in copyright violation. Um, with the artists, so um, they've done them with the uh, hopes that we would, or not hopes, that we should be just doing what we're supposed to be doing with them. And uh, yeah, so they'll be up on the site, they're about $29, and shipping to the US is about $29. You get more than one in a tube, so they're actually cheaper than the Prima and the, um, the IOD transfers, which are gorgeous, but they, the ones I sell run about $38, bucks, so we're a little bit cheaper anyways. Um, but they are more work, <laughs> but they have more character. And the image transfer site, um, the image transfer membership, I just started that and I have nobody in it yet because I just started it. And it's to learn how to do all of this because there's so much involved. And I've priced that at 29 or 27 per month and members get 10% off. So if you're, image, if you're interested in the, uh, the membership, just let me know. This so focuses solely on image transfers, but I do, Put, add more into there you know if it's appropriate and uh, we get into how to make the frames how to antique how to embellish um, we get into the mold so basically I've got two memberships going on one is for more woodworking and how to build you know everything from benches to potting benches to armoires I could teach you how to build a kitchen um, but I won't be doing that today <laughs> uh, so that's all that membership and the other membership is in the same site but it's more focused on everything to do with image transfers but there's a lot of the courses that are in the uh, woodworking that do apply to the image transfers. So you get them both in some ways. Uh, it's just, I, I want you to know how to pick out your lumber, what to do with your knots, um, how to make your frames. And if you wanna know how to make a frame, you need to know the type of tools. So that kind of all goes into the woodworking, but you need to know the woodworking so you can make these. You know, um, Home Depot will cut your boards this way but they will not cut them this way for you. So how are you gonna do that, right? You need a skill saw or a table saw. So I like to get into all of that. I like a lot of people aren't doing the big image transfers. I think because there's so many things that are blocking them, you know, they don't have the tools or they don't know how, or it's the prints. And uh, anyways, hopefully I'm solving all those in the um, image transfer membership. Uh, yeah, and I think there's a price for two if you wanna do them together, but I would suggest just starting out with the image transfers if you're interested. And if you are interested, just PM me and I'll make sure that you understand exactly what you're getting. And again, members, if you order the prints, you do get 10% off starting uh, last night. So yeah, that's about it, you guys. I'll let you go. I can't read the, um, the, uh, <laughs> the comments from here, but if you catch me on the replay, it's uh, about, what time is it here? It's 10 o'clock Thursday morning and we are doing an image transfer marathon. This week so again have a great day you guys and uh, just send me a personal message or ask me comments in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them okay that's it up off the ground again <laughs> thanks you guys bye hey everyone it's Cheryl here um, I'm working on this back bedroom at my parents house and this is a 12 or 13 part series on this bedroom makeover and uh, it was looking pretty grungy so it's it's a nice room it's a great size and I was just gonna show you some things we've done in here already but we actually had a mural on here at one time and it got torn off and the drywall is all icky you can see it's just torn it's awful and Nevaeh's dad is a drywaller but I just don't want drywall I don't want to be bothered with somebody coming over all week and and uh, fixing all this and I wanted to do something different in here uh, so my options were I went to I went around and I was going to do the wide planking on here you know the the shiplap which I love but we already have wood floors 
and you can see the top, the top is tongue groove. We actually put that over top of the popcorn ceiling. So this, the whole house was redone with the, uh, the tongue and groove on the top. We painted all white. The floor I'll show you in a minute is all uh, five inch or five and a half inch pine planks. So I didn't want to do the shiplap this way. I figured it'd be too much, even though I love it. I love it, especially if I painted everything white. My parents' house, so I won't be able to do that. Um, they don't want their floors painted white. And yeah, I would paint them white. Um, so I was going to do a shiplap all up here, but you know, a wall of shiplap is about $400. So I decided not to go that route. And I was going to do barn wood and everything else, but it was really expensive. So I went to Rona, which is a store up here in Canada. And you can see over here, that far wall there, that far wall over there, I found this at Rona. I mean, this is just not on here, right? It's, it's just there. Um, and this was put out by a company called Muir Design. And it was on sale for $42 a sheet. So I thought, why don't we uh, go and do the wall on this? And my mom wasn't totally into it because she likes the more of the formal and stuff. And she's worked at the hospitals for years. And this board always looked like something industrial out of the hospital. And the goal here is actually um, industrial shabby chic, which I thought would look great. So I'm going to show you these boards. I'll put them up here. Again, I didn't want to have to re-drywall all this. Like, no, don't want to go there. And I'm not a big MDF fan, which is what these are made out of. But they look really nice once they're up. So I went and had them all cut. There's this one here. I'm just going to put them up here so you can see. And get that one up here too. So there's three of them. And obviously down below there's a light socket, which I'll have to deal with. But just come over here and do another one for them. They actually do fit. So as long as nothing falls down on me for a minute, but I'll come on over here and show you. Doesn't that look way better? Let's see, I'm just going to try and deal with this here. So it's kind of an alcove, let's see, in this room. I'm trying to hold this up. It's an alcove in this room. So it goes around to there, comes around back to here. So it's an alcove. So I figured that wall would look amazing. Here's our floor. Can you see the floor? It's uh, just, you know, a brownie gold floor. It's got to probably be redone again. It's pine, and the ceiling is white tongue and groove. So that back wall was looking pretty horrible. So, and I love this look. So we thought that we would give that a try. So I went and picked that up today. Let me just tighten this back up here so I can go back over there and show you. I'll just show you the room around here for a minute. So don't look at the mess, but you know, it's a fair size room. We've been renovating, it comes all the way over to there and back and around to here, a light fixture hanging there. But you can get an idea of what that, hopefully you're seeing what I'm seeing. Um, there we go, I'll put it back down. So I thought that this would look really great. So what I did was it came in four it came in four foot panels, so I centered the first panel on here and didn't cut it, measured my wall, and then I t had the other two panels cut down to size so they balanced on either side. I left a little bit of a gap at the top because it's going to get um, covered anyways with the moldings, but I just thought it looked great. So it was, they ended up being $43 a sheet, that was it. So this whole wall, instead of being $400 or having to be all re-dry rolled, was $140 to have it done. Or that's what it'll be. I have to cut the light socket. There is a light socket down here. So I'm going to have to go downstairs and cut that one out. But yeah, let me know what you think. It's by Muir Design, and my idea is a, a, an industrial sort of shabby chic bedroom. And I've got a white bed that can go here. I've got to build the side rails for it. It's an older bed. And I was going to do chandeliers and make it white and gray and pink. Something like that. We'll play around, but it's a 12-part series on uh, what I'm going to be doing with this bedroom. So again, Mirror Design. Um, I don't know if the product's available in the States, but it, they have a number of different things that go with it. Um, there's a barn wood style and different colors. And they've got some other products, and it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to let you, you know, come back on here. So I'll let you go, and I'm going to go and... Uh, 
cut out the light socket. So again, if you're doing any sort of paneling, and it's a pattern, it's always nice to start with the center and then find out the difference and cut the two sides. So we trimmed off a bit off this side. Whoopsie. We trimmed a bit off this side here and that side over there so that it wasn't all pushed to one side or you didn't end up with, I mean, I like the big panel in the center here. And then these two panels are actually the same size on either side. You know, instead of starting on one side and pushing it over, it would be out of whack. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you like it? You don't like it? And I'm going to go down and cut the uh, sockets out now so I can install this. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Hey, you guys. I'm at Michael's with my sister, Jill. And uh, she wants to make a sign for her bedroom. Well, she's down here visiting. She's here for a couple of days. She flew in, and we're going to make signs. And she's killing me because she wants to spend $37 on each board. I mean, help me out here, you guys, Sue. These boards are $37 each, and she wants to buy one. I'm trying to tell her we can make them. Jill, $37 each. I know, but I'm not crafty. She's not crafty, she says. This is killing me. How many of you guys would buy these? Yes, they're 50% off, and yes, they're cool. They're perfect. She says they're perfect. They're but perfect. Uh, this is this is Jill. Let me see your video. We're gonna make her a sign that says, uh, "And the mountain shall bring peace to the people." Jill, pull it up on your phone and just show me. She's got her bedroom, and she wants to make a sign while she's down here saying, "And the mountain shall bring peace to the people." There's her bedroom, you guys. And we're gonna do a sign above it. Do I buy the boards that are fifty percent off at thirty-seven dollars each, or do we make our own? I'm buying the boards. She wants to buy the boards. Jill, hold up a board and weave it, everybody. There's my sister, Jill. And she wants to buy that board for $37. You know me, I've got tons of wood, and this is going to kill me, but I'm going to go with it because it's all ready to go. So we're going to buy a couple of these boards, and we're going to paint a sign on it that says, and the mountains shall bring peace to the people. That will look gorgeous. Anyway, stay tuned. I guess I'm buying boards when I have, like, 10,000 board feet of wood at home and I'm going to buy one of these boards. Okay, you guys, there's Nevaeh in the back. I'll let you go and we'll share what we're going to do with these signs from Michael's. And she is getting them 50% off. Look at her. She can't grab them fast enough. Are you buying two, Jill, or one? Two. She's buying two. Okay, we'll share with you what we're going to do with these later. Okay, you guys, another trip to Michael's, my favorite store. And uh, we're out of here. Bye. Hey, hi, everyone. I'm Cheryl from the Gilded Daisy, and I am here today to talk to you about my new membership. And I'm looking on the screen, and I'm looking kind of yellow. <laughs> I've been trying to work with this lighting for the last little bit, and I just can't seem to get it right. I'm waiting for my new lighting light to come in, and then I won't look so yellow. Enjoy to see, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here to talk to you about my new membership, the Gilded Daisy's Image Transfer and Embellishment uh, Boutique. And I have been a creator for many, many, many years, and... It has got me through some pretty tough times, um, and I've been building for a long time. I've been building furniture for over 25 years, and then I, you know, of course, got into all the finishing and the redoing of everything, and uh, in the last couple of years, I've been right into these image transfers, and I am absolutely in love with image transfers, and uh, I just love them, <laughs> and so I wanted to talk to you guys today about this and my new membership. It's $27 a month. I might as well just throw that out there right now, and what we're going to be doing because it, it just encompasses so many things, and yes, um, we will be creating uh, image transfers and learning how to embellish furniture and basically anything to make your project look super pretty and amazing, um, but there's so much more to creating than just the act of creating and that is and that's a really it's a lifestyle you guys it's a lifestyle and it's a lifestyle i have lived personally for many years and it's not always easy you have to work at it you want to create a lifestyle you have to be dedicated and have some discipline and, uh, and put the effort into it but the rewards are amazing like being creative has got me through some pretty rough times. I've, you know, my daughter's got Down syndrome. We, she's got, you know, stage three kidney disease. I've been through cancer. My mom's been through cancer. And the one thing that I know, the common denominator in all of this 
that has kept me sane. You know, of course, you can have your faith and you've got lovely family and you've got wonderful friends and uh, and all of this. But, you know, I needed something just for me. And that was uh, being creative. And I just want to share how to build a creative lifestyle through, you know, of course, doing some of the things I love to do and I love to share. And it's just there's just so many. There's just so many reasons to be creative. And so I put together this membership. I, I do have another one. It's the DIY Masterclass. And that's more about building and uh, getting into the woodworking and the tools. And to be honest with you, when I started out, I learned how to do all the finishing first. I mean, it was the finishing. And when you became a really good finisher and you switched over to building, you became a really good builder. You were able to pay attention to detail. And, you know, you just didn't knock something out and build it like crazy and put it out the door and... Uh, and expect somebody to come along and finish it. And I was always cleaning up everybody else's messes. So yeah, being doing the finishing end of things before you do the building end of things is super important. Um, you, you know how to build a piece so that the finishing is so much better and so much easier. So I thought I kind of done this all backwards. I probably should have done a finishing course first, but you know, here I am. Um, and you know, with all that being said, just about the finishing and the different you know, courses and, and everything I have taken and my memberships and stuff, the, the, the still that common denominator throughout this all has been um, building a creative lifestyle. And it has totally kept me see, sane all these years. Like, I swear. <laughs> I hope I'm not going up and down here, but uh, my camera's going up and down. But uh, it's this, this membership's about, you know, learning how to image transfer, uh, you just, oh, what else is there? Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking today. It's about image transferring. It's about embellishing your pieces and making them look pretty. Um, whether you're building a piece of furniture or you're, you, you're working on a, an armoire that you've picked up at a garage sale or something, it's about how to finish all, all of that. Um, and I'll share some pictures here with you in just a moment, but still more importantly is having that creative lifestyle and uh, learning how to, to live creatively and making time for it. It's just so important. I know when I don't create, I'm feeling kind of lost. And, you know, when I'm going through a tough time, like freaking out, worrying about my cancer's come back because my toe suddenly hurts. And those of you who had cancer know that. Um, it's rough. It's really rough. And, you know, you're stressing out thinking you've got freaking toe cancer because you stubbed your toe and it hurts now. I mean, it's all so silly. But if I just jump in and build something or do something or get and write a tutorial for my members or just get creative, all that kind of goes away. You know, I forgot that I was even thinking about it. So um, that's for me. I mean, this is a membership for you if uh, you've got some stresses in your life. And I hope you don't. I really do. And, uh, you know, you just need an outlet. You need a great community and you want to be around other creative, amazing people, this might just be for you. But I'll just, I'll, you know, enough about me and, and that sort of stuff, but I'll just pop on here and uh, show you some of the things that we will be doing in this membership site. So I can just pop this down a bit. Sorry, I just need to tilt this. I hope I don't lose you so I can see what I'm doing here. But let's start with this. Um, we have so many amazing artists in our community you know, around the world. Uh, this lady here um, is the artist, and this has been around for a while. She's been, you know, working with us for a while. She created the, um, the uh, what have we got here? I can see it. The piggies in the background and the goat. So she actually lives in Peru, and she's lovely, and her name is Lillian. So I try and find artists from around the world who can create really beautiful images for us, and then I sell the prints, and members get 10% uh, off the prints now. So I've worked out a deal for that, and we'll be getting 10% off our prints. So this is Lillian, and she was painting some of those, and I just want to keep going here and show you some more. I'll get rid of that one. Uh, where am I here? I'm still trying to work on this Be Live here. Um, here, this is one that my friend did, and it's kind of cut off here. Um, this was a St. Nick created by a lady, and she was from England. And he's gorgeous, and I just wanted to show you here. This has been transferred, and it hasn't been finished. I mean, all these little cracks in him, I don't know if you can see those, because I'm trying to point them with my arrow, and you can't see my arrow, obviously. But all those little imperfections in him are part of the transfer, and that's why I love transferring. Um, you don't have to be an artist, and then you can actually become an artist by adding your own little two bits into it, adding your own creativity back into that piece that you just transferred. And I'll show you a few more here now. And we've got... Uh, 
all these ones. Again, this is actually the, the church was done by the lady in Peru and the Santa was done uh, by a lovely lady in Greece. And she also did the truck. And the reindeer is part of one that was done by a lady in Pakistan. So I just wanted to share with you where we get all our prints from. And they're from around the world. And I love working with these ladies. They've actually become friends over the years. And they do amazing, amazing work. And, you know, I pay them to do this. And uh, it adds to their living allowance, I guess, <laughs> which I hope it does. I mean, things are expensive all over the world. So I'm just going to go through here and just see what else. And then here's one that one of our uh, members did. I think it was Connie. I think Connie did this one. Connie, is this yours? <laughs> Anyways, oh, hi, Mary Elizabeth. Hi. Um, this was her sheep that she had created and sent me a picture of that one. He turned out amazing. So these are all the things that you can learn um, in our image transfer and embellishment boutique. This light's getting a little warm. I'm going to shrink that one down, and I'll just bring up a couple more here. This is the one I'm working on now. Um, I'm going to highlight this one. I, You know, this was adding my own... Um, embellishing into it I antique this and it went a little dark and I can show you why it does that once in a while but I can get rid of that and I can also highlight it with a, a paintbrush and bring that back but that signs about 24 by 24 and let me see what else I got here to share with you and we have here a whoopsie sorry same one again let me go back and get the one I want to show you where's my clock sorry just have to find the clock here hmm I think the clock went somewhere and I don't know where. It was one that I did want to show you just now. Um, maybe it's back here one. Nope, that's uh, that's making cookies. And good thing I don't have any weird stuff. Oh, there it is being transferred, the reindeer. Um, let's see what else I've got on here. And uh, oh, there he is in the back too. He went to a musical at the Malahat Mountain Inn. <laughs> that was great. But I'll get rid of him. And I just actually wanted to show you the clock I was working on. It seems to have disappeared here. Um, here's another one that we had done, the rabbit, again, embellishing this, you know, adding pinstripes to it. And uh, that one turned out super amazing. But this is one of my favorite ones lately. I hope I'm not making you dizzy here. But this St. Nick is gorgeous. He was a mistake. I printed him out in black and white by accident. And then I added some uh, silver leafing to him. So that turned out absolutely beautiful. Hey, Carolyn, hi. Mary Elizabeth still here? Yay! We've got some people on here. But uh, I actually added silver leaf to this. So, you know, in our course, you will learn things about silver leafing. I mean, there's so many things that I can teach you. Uh, you know, we even get into file and file types and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, boring. But you need to know, there's so many other things you need to know just so that you can create the images you want to create. And uh, so we do get into, you know, some boring things like file types and, and uh and how to enlarge your photos, that was an important one because so many people are just sticking with the small little ones and there's so many more you can do. And uh, there's some more prints down here. I'm sorry, I'm just I'm still going through everything trying to find out what else I can show you here. This Santa, well, the Santa is gone. The reindeer in the corner, he is gorgeous. He actually became the reindeer in the stamp you see beside it. And we're just trying to fix him up a bit because his antlers came really close to the edge. So I haven't shared that one yet. And all those, these will all be going up on the um, shop page pretty soon. Oh, here we go. Just found uh, the clock I wanted to show you. Let's get rid of this one. Now, here's another form of image, image transferring. This is put out by IOD uh, products. These are rubbed off image transfers. And we get into how you can mix all this up because you can work well, use both of them. But this was a, a obviously, this was a circle that I had made. It wasn't uh, one of the old schools. But this thing's huge. Yeah, it's about 44 inches, it's about four feet around. And I had used the IOD transfers, and they are rub-off transfers. So there's all these different types of transfers, rub-off transfers, ones that you use gesso or transfer medium for. And then, of course, there's the ones that you can use citrusol, and there's just so many varying types of uh, transfers that you can do. And I get into all that. Um, let me just see here. I'll just throw up another IOD one here. There's another IOD one there that is absolutely gorgeous. And again, these ones were rub-off transfers. I put that on the floor so I can take a picture of it for you. But I don't even, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain to you what this membership's all about. And it's just so big. I, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to break it all down and not be so horribly confusing here. And yeah, I'm just going to show you another one. Here's another thing that happens in the membership. I should have written out a script and then I wouldn't be babbling on so much. Okay, see these. These are the actual prints. 
um, the prints come reversed. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to reverse them yourself. The prints are already done. Mind you, how would you reverse a print anyways, once it was in the physical, but these prints are already done and they're about 33 inches wide. So they're quite big. So in the membership, you can either, um, I'll point this way. <laughs> you can either uh, order the prints for these ones, um, or you can actually print out the uh, black and white, uh, black and white download on your computer and upload it to something like Block Poster and create a large uh, poster out of that, and then you can paint it in. So there's tutorials on how I painted uh, my truck in, which is probably sitting behind me here. But <laughs> um, so some of the uh, images and the artwork we get a lot you know it's all copyrighted and but the artists have agreed we've decided that some of these can be made as available as downloads and then you can print them off on your toner printer or you can use an inkjet and run down to a store and get it into toner i still swear toner makes the nicest print the, the nicest images um, inkjet is just kind of dull which is good for a um, pattern but uh, you can take the uh, downloads together because they print out 8 by 11 sheets or, you know, maybe the legal size if you're good at doing that. And you can take them together and transfer them yourself or copy out the pattern. You know, some of the other ones just don't work as well um, being taped together. You'll end up with a line or a seam right down the face, and that means you've got to repaint the whole entire face. Um, let me just read some of the comments here. Hi, Wendy. Mary Elizabeth is here. Oh, Sandy, I know. Aren't they gorgeous? I don't know which one you're talking about. And Carolyn's here. And you guys, hey, thanks for being here. <laughs> um, it's the middle of a Saturday afternoon, so probably not the best time to do a live. And, oh, I want to show you another one here. I'll get rid of this. This car is now out. Um, the little red car in the left-hand corner or the right-hand corner, de depending on whether your screen's been changed around, that's also be been available in blue. And that's a new one. I just got that one the other day. So, again, more image transfers. I'm showing you all the Christmas stuff I know. Um, just so we can, oh, here's another one too. Just so you can see them all. I'm hooked on Christmas right now. How can you tell? Um, there's another one there. Oh, there's a Christmas clock I did. And uh, you know what? I Christmas mannequins, is that part of this uh, membership? Well, heck yes, why not? <laughs> I love making mannequins, and uh, I've written a course, obviously, on how to make a Christmas mannequin. So I'll throw that in there, too. Anything that I think might be of interest, and I know it's kind of off topic, but, uh, you know, there's Christmas mannequins in there, too. And the other thing that I have included in here that I'm not going to have a picture on um, is how to make all the frames. I mean, there's just so much, you guys. I don't I should have written a list so I could explain it all to you better. But the... Um, I teach you how to make the frames if you're not a good frame maker, but because I come from a woodworking background before I came from this kind of artsy background, um, I want to show you how to make your actual projects better if you're using um, the woodworking tools. And that gets into countersinking and which edge should be showing on your frames and, and uh, which side of the line you should be cutting on and just things to help make your woodworking skills a little bit better. So there will be some... Uh, more entry-level little courses on woodworking. <laughs> Sorry, had to get that in there. Um, it's not mentioned in the title, obviously. I don't want to scare people away. But, you know, if you're going to make uh, nice stuff, you, you know, I, I, everything I transfer is onto wood or onto furniture. You know, it's like how to, how to fill your, your uh, holes from your knobs in your dresser when you want to put new knobs on. You know, all these little techniques. I mean, how many of you use, uh, how many of you use a, uh, that stuff called Bondo to repair your furniture. It works great. So I need the field to make a mannequin. <laughs> yes, Mary Elizabeth, they turn out gorgeous. So there's a lot more involved in this membership than just learning how to transfer and uh, make things look pretty. There's the whole lifestyle aspect, and we get into a bit of that too. I mean, I'm going to hold you guys accountable. If you want to live this kind of really super creative lifestyle, and if you are already, I mean, just the community alone is fantastic. I can't say enough about the women in the community. They are just super supportive and lovely. Um, now I've lost my train of thought here. <laughs> but, yeah, so this membership is about, you know, not only building and creating. It's about living a creative lifestyle. And uh, I have, uh, you know, I want some accountability. I need it too. And, you know, someone else in the community to talk to about all the things you're doing and all the cool stuff, and you'll get lots of great praise. And, and uh, But the other, um, there was one more thing I wanted to tell you. Oh, what we did for the last group, we had all your characters drawn. So that was tons of fun. Um, and 
you know, having your character drawn, you know, character etcher, <laughs> um, that they've been done by a gentleman over in Serbia. There's a couple of men in Serbia that have been in the background of this, um, helping me develop this membership site. And they are just, they're a husband, uh, not a husband, they're a father and son team, and they've got an uncle. They're like an all-male household. And uh, it's Ivan and his dad and his uncle, and they're incredible, incredible artists. And so, you know, it's just kind of getting them to think American a little bit. Um, Ivan's dad, it's really quite interesting. I get things that look kind of gnomish once in a while, and they're beautiful, but they're not kind of shabby chic. Like, how do you explain shabby chic or girly to a gentleman in Serbia whose English is good, but, you know, it's lots of fun, and uh, his son is amazing, and they have helped me so much with this. So, you know, there's just so much. And uh, they did all our characters. They didn't do mine yet. I should get that done. Um, so that's part of the membership. I want you to have you drawn as a character. And it's part of the it's part of the first few weeks that we get into. So hopefully he's not too busy and he will do these for me again because they were amazing. Yes, Mary, they were they were excellent. I just love them. Oh Tammy, thank you so such, such a nice comment here. Um, oh, there's so many. Tammy, you make beautiful jewelry. I don't know why you're getting into this. Jewelry is absolutely gorgeous that you make and you should be sharing that with us in the group more. But anyways, yeah, so I'm going to pop on later. I'm going to have to go pretty soon because Nevaeh is going to be home. And I hope I didn't confuse the heck out of you all. Um, but just to summarize, it's the Gilded Daisies Image Transfer and Embellishment Boutique membership. And uh, yeah, that's a mouthful, but at least I didn't add and some woodworking in there. And it's not only about creating, but it's about creating new friendships and uh, creating a uh, creative lifestyle. And there's just so much more. Um, and uh, it, it opened, being creative just opens up so many doors. And uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to go. I'm getting hot under this light. I can see my cheeks going red. And I'll be back on later on today. So if anybody wants to join, I don't think I even put, I'm not that good, you guys. I, I don't even have what I wanted to put on here for you. Um, <laughs> anyways, I will put the, uh, the link if you choose to join in the comments below um, this. I'm still learning out how to use be live. I mean, I had to create, get creative just to learn how to do all this stuff. Um, anyways, if you decide to join, I'll put it in the link below. I did email out to all my followers on my mail list, and I hope I'm not spamming anybody. I hate spam, and uh, and I've sent it out in the email list too. So I'll see you guys later on today. I've got lots more to share. I'll try not to babble and be a little bit more organized. And uh, I'm so ready to dive into this Christmas season and have some fun. So I'm going to let you guys all go. And uh, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching on a Saturday afternoon. And, uh, yeah, that's it. And I'll see you later on this evening after my daughter goes to bed and isn't making all the noise. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Everybody. It's Cheryl here from the Gilded Daisy. <laughs> Sorry about this funny lighting here, but I haven't popped on uh, on here for a little bit. So I just wanted to kind of show you what I've been working on these days. You can see in the background, we're still working on lots and lots and lots of transfers. I mean, I haven't been sharing them lots because I figure you've seen a million from me. But if there's anybody around, and we'll see if there is. Oh yeah, before I get started, you guys, all my American friends, happy Thanksgiving. So I hope you're having an amazing, amazing day and you get to spend it with all your family and friends, and I hope you have tons to be grateful for. So, happy Thanksgiving to you all. Hi, Wendy, I'm back on this one too. Um, I thought I'd better come on the Gilded Daisy and share what we're doing in our embellishment class here. So again, Wendy, you've seen all this, but thank you for being on here again, that's great. Um, here's some of the things we're working on right now in our group, and you can see the big, almost done this one, a little bit more to go. And I'm going to share what everybody else has been doing, too, um, just in the post. But this is the big, uh, it's big, it's about 35 inches across, done on planks. I'm still working on the tree. And I'll stand up here. Sorry, you guys. But I'll stand up here and show you. So I'm almost done this one. I've done it a bit darker. So again, this one's been image transferred. And the text is reversed. It's just showing up the right way there. And I'm just working on shading in all the tree. A little bit more, my friend Terry had transferred this and started it. She's in Disneyland, lucky her. And uh, I'm just doing a bit more shading and finishing it off. But that's just all on planks. So there's that one that we've just finished doing, and I'll share with you a few more. Let's see, put that one down here. And 
And this is the big one we just finished doing. This is 24 by 24. And it says Santaville North Pole. <laughs> so that's been a fun one. Again, these are all transfers. And I'm going to paint over this one too. I like it when they're painted over. So there's another one. All these prints are available. And as you guys, as members know, all the prints are 10% off for our members with the embellishment course, the image transfer and embellishment uh, membership. But there's another print we've done. That's pretty cool. It's done on three quarter inch birch plywood. And of course, it's always good plywood that you want to use. There's that one there. And I'll just pop on a few more here. And then we're just doing some fun smaller ones here. Just with the deer and things, they're beautiful. So again, those are all reversed. Here, just let me show you the one without the sign on it. These ones have all been reversed, but you're seeing them the right way. And I use block poster for that. And uh, when you're doing your image transfers, if you're taping your pages together, you've got to get rid of these lines. So you pretty well have to paint over it again and uh, make those lines disappear, or you can just order prints. But uh, yeah, so that's another one that we're going to transfer today. So I just wanted to give you a little update of what we've been working on. And uh, I think I've got some more here to show you. I just can't find everything right now. Just a sec. I'll find a few more things here. And where are we? I've got another one on the go. Half a second. Where's mine? And this is the other one that I pretty well finished now. Just touching up the uh, just touching up the lettering on that. So that one was actually hand painted. I did not um, transfer this one. I used the pattern and hand painted it. But it was super easy. Those trees are really easy to do, you guys. Like super easy. And if you're in our membership class, or, or um, remember that all these uh, downloads, these ones here, the uh, transport trucks, the Christmas transport vehicles, are all available free as downloads in our membership. Um, otherwise, you can order the prints, but prints are 10% off for the members. So, Wendy, I'm going to have to pop yours up um, and share those if that's okay with you, and because I love the back, black background that you did. So, you guys, again, to all my American followers and friends, happy Thanksgiving Day, and I hope you have an amazing, amazing day, and um, we might check back with you later on tonight. Okay, you guys, thanks. Bye. Hey, good morning everyone. It's uh, just after nine and I'm back at the mantle again that I shared a couple of days ago. I was busy making uh, Christmas stockings out of old uh, vintage, uh, what do you call those things, sock forms. Anyway, so I'm back at the mantle and I'll show you what I've done so far. Not a whole lot, but finding wood's taken me a while. But what I decided to do is, I mean, we want to replace this tile down the road, but there's no way we're going to get a tile guy in before Christmas and I want it to look nice and so I'm cheaping out here big time and I'm painting it. So I started painting it white. It's not going to stay white. I'm actually going to paint it gray. And so I'm trying not to get anything into the little grout lines, but I've painted this white. It might get changed to barn wood, but it was a really ucky looking cedar scratched up, handles hanging off, piece that have been sitting like that forever behind the wood pile. I don't know what this was here for. I think the plan was a long time ago. These little doors don't open to anything, but I think at one time you were going to, um, have your wood on the outside of the house. The house was built in the 80s, but I think that was the whole idea. I don't think it was a decorative piece because it's kind of odd, but I think they were actually gonna have a box outside and then you just open up from the outside and you throw your wood in. Who knows, maybe we might do that because I thought it was kind of a cool idea, but that was the best thing I could come up for why this was here because again, there was nothing behind it. So I might just put barn wood on here. Haven't decided, I'll wait till I get the tiles on. In the meantime, I painted it white. So I decided again to uh, paint the tiles. And once again, you know, in the come spring, if we decide to get a tile person in and redo them, great. But we're not about to pull out this old fireplace and I would love to get a new one, uh, burning wood stove. Um, but in the meantime, we're painting. Cheap, fast, hopefully not ugly. <laughs> so what I'm putting on here is something called sticks. You've probably seen the reverse on here, not too sure, but I'm gonna paint it all with sticks. And I just started. And getting behind this old wood stove is going to be hard. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet because I almost can't get it behind there. So I'm just using a little brush and I'm going to paint it. The dog's barking. <laughs> I'm going to paint it all with the sticks. And then I'm going to go over it again with a, kind of a light gray. And I mean, I heard you can even paint these old fireplaces. It's got gold on it. I'd like to take the gold off and spray it. But we'll see. 
Anyways, I'm going to show you here the old fireplace. Sorry if you get dizzy, but yeah, I'm going to paint all these tiles, but I have to get in behind this. I mean, we really want to replace this one day, but it's not going to happen before Christmas. And I just want all of this looking pretty before Christmas. So I have to get in behind there, but I'll just show you what I've been doing for the mantle up here. What I did, it took me about three hours to find that piece of wood and all my junk. I have so much junk, but I uh, found this nice big piece. This one actually came from Iowa. <laughs> Um, and it's about five inches by six inches, so it plunked on here really nice. I just, I had trimmed the end, so I put that on, and I also added a nice big chunk down the front here. They're actually dry. I was out getting it in the pouring rain, so that's going to look really nice. And I'm going to do it up on the top pieces here, if you want to see up there. Hey, Terry, hi. I'm also going to get rid of that ugly light up there. Ooh, how ugly. Paint stuff up there. Um, I'm going to cap all this off, too. So I'll cap off all these areas, you know, these little steps. I was playing around with little wood Christmas trees again. But I'm going to cap all that. I'm not allowed to paint the brick white. And actually, it's turning out pretty good not being white. Hi, Mary Beth. And, you know, it is actually, I started to sort of, I'll just pull this up here. I actually started to sort of um, just do a light wash, very little, and added some more gray back in. And I might continue on up there. Um, my dad likes the brick. I'm actually not minding the brick now either. It actually suits this. So it'll probably be all right. But again, I'm not painting it white. Um, Mom and Dad thought it, well, Mom wants it white. Dad wants it brick. Let's respect Dad and not paint it. But I am trying to get away with lightening a bit of it up in here. And hopefully he hasn't noticed it yet. And then for the decor, a friend and I, we've been cutting out. He cut me out some last year. I'm going to do it all in these little, um, they're, uh, what do you call it, metal, roofing old roofing trees. So I've been cutting these out. He cut out a whole bunch for me too, but I've sold them. So I'm going to put these up on the mantle. I thought those would look really cute. Whoa, and there goes that. So I'm going to stick all those up there. I've already, he's, we've been <laughs> making more stars. Let me just pull this up if I can. I've been making stars up there, and then we've got the uh, metal trees going on there. I've been making these little stockings. I had about 10 of those forms. You know, the little metal forms are so cute. So I've been making these that are going down to Union 22. How can you tell I'm getting sidetracked here? But Mary Beth, I can't keep up with you and your beautiful wreaths. This is my attempt at a wreath. <laughs> you make amazing wreaths. So little sock things, doing those up. Let me show you here. But my plan is, let's see here is to make some more of these, cut some more of these out. And they'll be like silhouettes up here. They're sharp, I gotta sand those edges down because they're pretty sharp. But I thought they'd look pretty cool with the trees and the, the stars up there. So I'm gonna take those off, so that's part of the plan. And I have some brown deer all put up there. So yeah, oh and this, somebody was throwing these out so I grabbed two of these. I'm gonna make those into wreaths. I'm gonna use my stamps and uh, put a little greenery on top. But these, this is from Novak braids. So it was obviously a spool for rope at one time. So today, Terry, I'm going to make this into two wreaths. I've got two of these. I'm going to work on the wood trees, but this morning it's working on these mantles. I still have another big post to go on the other side and cap all these off and then I'll get to uh, framing the room because I've got to put all the, um, what do you call it, up there. All the crown molding still has to go up. And I think I'm not going to use your basic crown molding. I'm going to kind of do it in a T. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to make my own crown molding and I'm going to do it more flat like a 90 degree angle crown molding. So again, we've got the mantles happening, this uh, painting down here, and I'm going to add another post from the ground up to there and finish off that corner there. So I've got another big post going down here. It's just outside drying because everything's still wet. And cap all that off. And uh, I've made my stars. I made two. Gord made the rest. And I'm going to continue on painting all down here. And so if anybody's painted towel before, let me know how yours turned out. But I've got all this to paint. So I'm going to get the uh, sticks on it this morning. I'll get the, oops, sorry, there I am. I'll get the sticks on it this morning, let it dry. I think I only need one coat. And then I'm going to pick up some gray paint and I'm going to paint it all gray. Good, is that a word? 
I'd like to get rid of this gold. I think you can spray that, but I don't think I better monkey around with this. I don't know if they come off too easy. So the gold is probably gonna have to stay, but I believe my little um, deer have gold in them. Hold on, where's my deer? They do, here's my deer. I did not make these deer, but there is gold in the deer. So maybe I can make it like a design element and say I did it on purpose because they actually match. So <laughs> again, you can make old ugly stuff look nice. At least I've got a wood stove. We have one in the house, which we love. I never want to switch over to propane or gas. Sorry, propane and gas companies. I like the wood. <laughs> I think it's, it's beautiful. And of course it's not on this morning because I don't want to be painting this stinky stuff with the fireplace on. So again, grateful that I have a house with a wood stove in it. Just love it. I'll share with you this later on. I hope you guys are all having a great Friday. If you're in the membership, I'll be checking in later on with you guys to see what you finished. I saw some of your projects and they are amazing. They're beautiful. I gotta go back and comment on everybody's. I do look at the stuff you show me. I just didn't have a chance to comment on it. So that's the idea. Do all this mantle today, get stuff down to the Little Shop Union 22 today, my stockings that I made, and kills all, not kills, but sticks all of this, and then I'll do some trim. So we'll see how far I get today. So over and out, I will talk to you guys later on, and I hope you are having a wonderfully beautiful Friday. This is the weekend, and we all get to go shopping, uh, hopefully this weekend. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys later on. Um, shut up and keep creating. Okay, bye. I'll get rid of you now. <laughs> Time to go to work. Can't sit here and chit chat. See you guys later. Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from the Gilded Daisy. I'm here today with a complimentary class on how to build a potting bench. Um, we're building these in our master class right now, so I thought we would uh, show you what we're up to in our class. We've been doing plenty of uh, photo transfers, but I thought today we would talk about potting benches. And I've got a lady coming down today who's actually started hers a couple of days ago. And another lovely lady up in Kelowna, better be Kelowna, <laughs> um, Wendy. So I get to see if Wendy's on here. And uh, I'm just gonna give her a phone call and let her know that we're on here now. And I'll wait till a few more of you might show up and, and we'll get going on it. I think I need some music, Paul. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Wendy to pop on because this one's dedicated to her. So we'll see if anybody's around this morning. And uh, yes, we're building potting benches today. There's a couple of you on here now, so I just thought I would uh, reiterate what I just said. It's Cheryl from the Gilded Daisy. And who have I got on here? Hi, Sheila. Hi, Wendy. You are here. Hi, Wendy. Okay, we've got uh, two sets of plans here from two ladies. I know you can't see them. I'll bring them up closer. Um, we're down at a beautiful lake uh, in our new little work spot and I'm hoping that uh, our internet doesn't cut out because we're relying on data and we're not hooked up to anybody else except for my data and I'm hoping it works as it wasn't working on the weekend. So here we are. We're gonna give it a try again but I'm quickly gonna give you a close-up of the two, uh, the two potting benches that we're working on. I'll see if you can see them. I don't know if you can see that a little bit. It's pretty out, nice out down here and I don't know if the reflection is shining on it, but there is one. That one is Wendy's. And here's Terry's who's actually coming down today and gonna help us out. So Terry's actually in the master class and so is Wendy. And we haven't really talked much about it, but uh, they're both in there and we're working on potting benches. So there's the plans there. So I thought maybe I would go over yours, Wendy, for a minute because I know you're on here. Actually, it's getting warm down here already. And we'll just go over this a bit. And uh, I've got a couple of questions for you, Wendy. I mean, these, these, I have to apologize. These live videos are a little hard because you can't make this thing go in and out and you don't have a big camera crew. So you just gotta wing it with what you have. <laughs> so a friend of mine who's also in the master class who just joined and now are friends, she's gonna phone me with any questions you have so that I could possibly answer them because I can't keep coming up and, and reading the comments because of the reflection from the sun. I actually can't see them. So right now, I'm going to take a look, until Terry gets here, I'm going to take a look at Wendy's, and I've got some questions for her. So I might have to phone Claire. What's that show called where you phone somebody when you need an answer? 
Paul, do you know, remember what that show was where you have to phone for a helpline? It was a game show. Anyways, I'm going to make a phone call. <laughs> no, it's not 911. So, Wendy, I've got a question for you. You've got four inch posts on here. Are those actually four inch posts or are they three and a half by three and a half? I thought we'd get that one figured out right now. I'm just going to run and get my measuring tape here. Measuring tape. Thanks, Paul. Paul's the guy in the background that is so helpful. So I'm going to also measure Terry's here. We had already measured those. Terry's post. This is called a 4x4. Four four. So for those of you who don't know, a 4x4 four four is actually only 3.5 inches. So if you're doing some serious measuring or some serious building, you need to know these things. Like it's a three and a half inch post, not a four inch post. So I don't know, Wendy, if you heard that or not, but are yours actually four inch posts or three and a half inch posts? I don't know who, who came up with this measuring thing, but they're always trying to trick you. So I'm taking a look at yours here. Now on your work surface, Wendy, on your, your boards, are, did you pick up inch and a half boards or are you using three quarter inch boards? I'm going to phone Claire and see if I can get some answers from you because I actually cannot see you on here. So I'll phone Claire. It's like dialing the 1-800 hotline to Claire right away and I'll see if she's got some, if she can read out the answers. Let me just grab uh, Terry stuff here. Terry's actually going to be using uh, two by sixes. And again, hi! <laughs> So I've got, yeah, I think there might be a few from Wendy, Wendy on there, but Wendy, this is a two and a, a two inch board, which is really only an inch and a half board. So I'm going to wait for Claire to see what your answer is on there. And here comes Terry now. She doesn't know she's going to be partially live. Okay. I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Okay. Just a sec. I might have to phone you back to put you on speakerphone. Half a sec, everyone, just so I can hear what's going on. Good, how are you? Hi, Terry. Good, thank you. I'm on live. Oh, are you? Come on down. We're going over the two potting benches. I've just got, uh, I showed everybody your... Hi, Cheryl. Hi, that's so much better. Hi. Can you see what Wendy answered? I'm just looking. I can't see anything from Wendy at the minute. Okay, Wendy, are you still there? Hopefully you're in here. I'm sure I saw you. Anyways, we've got uh, Terry is here. <laughs> Terry's kind of shy, but we're, we're looking at her boards right now. The top of her potting bench is going to be out of uh, the one and a half inch by six inch, which, well, actually one and a half inch by five inch planks. So we'll just go over both of yours now. <laughs> Terry, you can come over and say hi if you want. So what Terry's got is she's got three and a half inch posts for the front and back. She's got, this is Hello. Terry. <laughs> this is Terry. She's been down here building hers. Actually, she's just been uh, sanding hers up. So we just want to go over her things today. And, uh, and Wendy's. This is Wendy's mm -hmm. that she's building. Do you want to grab your other boards? Sure. Sure. <laughs> then you don't have to be in here. <laughs> if I send her to get her boards, she doesn't have to be in here for a minute. So what we're starting with, I'm just going to start from the beginning if there's some of you that have just joined. We're building potty benches in our master class, and this is a complimentary video today, live feed video, all professional-like, which of course it's not, um, on building a potty bench. So I just wanted to share with you some of the things we're going to go over today, um, and my friend is going to see if she can read any of your uh, questions there, and see if that works, or text them to me and, and see if you've got any questions. So the first thing is, when you're building your potty bench, you need uh, four posts of some sort, whether they're newel posts or or straight up and down posts like these ones. There's the posts. These ones are Terry's. They've all been sanded. You need, you need some back posts and front posts. And you need something to go in between those posts. So Terry has picked out... Terry's using this window. And this window is going to go between the two posts. We're not adding side panels to it. We can get into that, but we might, might add a sink in this one. Wendy, I know you want to. And it's just this between two posts is going to be the start of it. But there's all sorts of other little things that you need to do. And the glass is, of course, going to get fixed in this one before we put it in. 
But I'm just going to lay out what we've done so far for hers to, to see what's going on. And uh, we'll be back in one minute. Are we having fun? <laughs> I'm just going to show them what yours is going to look like. And then we can get on to... See, we haven't cut down her posts yet. We want to make sure that our layout is looking right and it's where we want it. So usually what I do is I'll lay it out on the ground. And I might have to drop it down so you don't see me here. And just show you what it's looking like when we set it up here. Oh no, we're going to cut your other posts so they, they uh, fit. And we're going to pre-drill. There's the other lady up there who's wanting to learn this so bad. And uh, I thought, okay, let's start. I'm just going to set this up a bit, move the camera around so you can see it. But right now, I know you can only see, okay, I'm going to see some of these Hello, Wendy says you are watching. Oh, great. Okay. So I just asked Wendy if she's watching. Pardon? If I sorry, I can't. Yeah, I can't read the rest of the comments on there. They just don't. The sun no, just. We've got Suzanne watching. So hi, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Yes, yeah, Suzanne always shows up. Hi, Suzanne. And, and hi, Connie and Stephanie and Dolores. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm just setting this up a bit and I'll drop the camera down so you can see what Terry's doing with hers. Now Terry has absolutely no experience and she's amazing. She actually went and bought her own wood yesterday and took pictures of that and I was totally impressed with her. So I'm going to just drop this down a bit and show you without having to look at me anymore because the wood's much more attractive than I am. Hold on here. I'm just going to drop this down so you guys can see what's going on a bit. Can you see that a bit better? How's that looking Claire? Okay, so you can see the, uh... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, over to the left a little bit. Pardon? The left a little... Oh, here comes Paul to save the day. Left, that way, that way. Here, we'll just do this so you can see it, and we might have to drop it down a Perfect. So, you can see what I'm doing here. I've just laid these out. We might have to actually put this on the ground so you can see it better. Or maybe Paul can lift it up for a minute. Lift it and tilt it my way. There you go. Yay. So we've just been lying this out. This is what I do when I start building. You know, you just start lying everything out and seeing where things are going to go. There. Now you can see. Now how long can Paul hold that pose for? So we've kind of set this up a bit. Again, we might have to put this on the ground. And I'm just going to grab the other two posts here. Hold on. Coming right back. Ones that are right beside me. Hold on, we got him here. So the first thing we're doing is working on the back panel. And yesterday, Terry sanded and we started cutting some of hers. So you can see how you can start seeing how all this fits together here. Just to give you an idea. And then that way, probably a little bit. Poor Paul, good thing he's got strong arms. But I just wanted to show you the layout of how we start all of this. You've got your back post, this is where you start, and with your center, your center window, and then you, you start lining up. Do you want a shelf? You start measuring up where your, your uh, counter is going to sit. You start measuring up if you want a backsplash on here. So we could probably put it back down for a second, and I'll show you some more things you want to pay attention to. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. But you can kind of see how we start setting it up so we know what it looks like. And we haven't cut our posts yet. We don't want to cut those until we've got our design, so we might just drop this on the ground and then we can see it a little bit better. I think we should. Okay. Well, yeah, we're going to put, yeah, we'll put these, we'll just give us a moment and we'll put these on the ground. I'll hold this up and you can just slide Yeah, let's it up. just, let's just put it down on the black. Here, let me get one corner of you. Look at this. It's a moving set. It doesn't get any better than this. Then you guys can really see what's going on. That's better. And then we can pull that in. Is that better, Claire? Yeah, maybe a bit closer. Is that, how's that going? A little bit closer, she said. Yeah, a little bit closer, that's, yeah. Yeah. How's, how's that? Close, too close or looking good? And then off to this way a little bit. Get down a bit. Down a bit. 
other one. No, that's good. Okay. okay. Is that any better? So now I'm on the ground. <laughs> Can we tip it a little bit more this up? This way towards me a bit? Yeah. Down? Down this other way. The the top on there. No, this the, the handle up here. Oh, of course. Yeah, turn that and then come down towards me. Down, down this. Down, down. Perfect! Yay! Now you get to see my legs. <laughs> How attractive. And then we just move it this way a little bit, Paul. Of course. Of course. Thanks, Paul. Ah, so much better. We're perfect. Now we're on the ground down by the lake. So, hello everybody. You get to see my knees. So, what we started doing yesterday was we started laying everything out for Terry's. Terry didn't know we were doing a live video today. Neither did I. Well, I sort of did, but it was too late to tell Terry and then she wouldn't have come. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, what you want to do is you want to get those back posts, and then where's the where's the measuring tape again? We started out with posts. These posts are six feet. We might cut them down. We might not. Just depending on what we decide to do. But we've decided from Terry's diagram that we're not going to have the window sit right up at the top, right, Terry? Yeah. I yeah. think it's changed. Yeah, right, yeah. right there it is. So we were originally going to bring this window right up to the top in the diagram, but you're allowed to change things because it's your potting bed. So originally that was gonna sit up at the top and have a cap over it, or it wasn't even really gonna have a cap, I don't think yet, but we were gonna have the balls on the top, but now we're sliding this down. Say we go down about four inches so that looks good. You've got a little bit of a reveal up here, if you can see. It's not quite all the way down. And then we'll sit another board. I'm going to trim this one down, down here. And were we going to put a shelf on it? Just one of these boards as a shelf or a wider one? I think just one of those, or we were going to leave it without. So. Yeah, like if this comes across yeah. here, that will finish off this top cap of the window. And then we'll, we'll put a cap on and we'll put the balls on the top. So if we go down farther down here, so that's where we're starting from the top. And then what I need is a pencil. Anybody got a pencil? <laughs> I'm trying to pull my pants up here. What I want to do is measure where, if you can see here, I'm going to measure where the 36 inches is from the bottom up. Sorry if we're all over the place. We're just not set up down here yet. And uh, But I'm going to mark with my fingernail until poor dear Paul gets a measuring tape. Get him a, a pen. Pencil, yay, and look at that. It's a proper pencil too. We're gonna to go 36 I inches. Wendy replied, so when you're ready, I'll let you know what she said. Okay, Wendy. What did she say? Um, Wendy's using three and a half. Oh great. Uh, for her four, four by fours and her shelf's uh, three quarter inch. Okay, so her top counter is three quarters of an inch. Great. Yeah, her step, yeah. Perfect, because I can show her how to chunk that up a bit too if we want to on the front. So thanks, Wendy. So what you're gonna do is right on the side here. I think we have to come over this way a bit, Paul, sorry. We're using yours. Hey, there we are. So I've marked this up here 36 inches from the ground. So that means if Terry's window's sitting up here, she's gonna have this much gap here. And we have to decide whether we want that big of a gap or not. I'm just gonna grab the other post. There's one more post that goes in here. Is it on that side? What do we do oh, with the yeah, post? It here it is. So I'm just going to show you what that's going to look like. So if there's another, if that's where Terry's counter is, and I don't know if you can see this, 36 inches is down here. So you might have to, oh, perfect. See, there's a gap here of 36 inches. Now it's up to Terry whether this gap, if we think it's a little bit bigger, if we don't want that gap quite as big, we just pull this up and we trim it off the bottom. So you want to think about the gap you're leaving in here. Wendy, you've got a deeper window, so that's to 36. Let's just have a quick boo here. This is all just designing your potting bench. Terry's is about 18 inches, and I think yours is about 25. So yours is going to come down quite a bit farther, Wendy, to about here, which is perfect. You only have that bit of a gap. But it just depends on, I mean, we can run a shelf down in here. Now, how's that gone weird? <laughs> I think I skipped onto Facebook. I might have to turn that off. No, um, she's... 
No, it's it's hearing oh, me talk not delayed not on there. There. I have to turn it off for a minute. Sorry, you guys. I just I was hearing myself talk on there. So we're just going to... So, Wendy, you're fine in between here. We just have to decide if we want to close that gap in a bit. Terry says, yes, let's close in the gap. So if we brought that countertop up to about here... You know, the other thing, Terry, we can do, just so you know, is we could put a backsplash in here. Do you know what I mean? Like, we could... If I had some chalk... You know, I'm on, I'm on a chalkboard. I should have brought chalk. But we could actually do a back, a scallop backsplash in here if you wanted. If you wanted to keep this height. Or we could come down just a couple of inches and see. So if we drop down, I mean, right now that's at 38. So we could cut these posts down to 38 inches. I mean, just drop two inches off. That would be all right. Mm -hmm. That would look mm -hmm. good. Yeah, so with, with Terry's, to fill this kind of gap, we could... Cut, we could do a scallop backsplash in here, or we could add a second shelf in here. So we're going to trim our posts up probably about two inches and uh, cut those down. So we're at 72 now, so we're going to cut these posts at 70, 70 inches. So if you guys want to hang out while we cut our posts down to 70 inches, that's fine by us. <laughs> so we'll give these to Paul, the invisible man. And... Uh, Try and pull my pants up all the time here. Okay, <laughs> I'm just going to drop you guys back here and give Claire another call again. And Paul needs my tape measure. And we're also, did you, did you grab your other two bricks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I didn't bring them out here though. Okay, yeah, we'll give them because we'll cut them too. Okay, 70. 70 inches. Do I need two? Pardon? Two of them? Yeah, we'll cut them down. So I'm back again. Sorry, this is a live we're building, right? So in and out, in and out. So I'm going to sit up here where I can see you guys a bit. I'm going to sit on this blackboard and go over a few more things with my headshot. Let's see. Hold on. Getting all adjusted here. Um, the same length as these. So we're just going to do some quick cutting here to this length here. To that length. Hello everybody, <laughs> I'm back. So I'm going to show you these diagrams again. We're down here at a new property that I have the fortunate, uh, the fortunate whatever of caretaking. So it's going to be amazing. And there's a little workshop here I can use. So this is where we are today and we're not quite set up. But here is Wendy's. Can you see that? I think you might be able to see that. That's Wendy's diagram. And we're working on Terry's. And Terry was going to have a sink, but I think she's changed her mind and not doing the sink. I'm going to put the sink in mine, and Wendy's got a sink in hers. So just to kind of recap what we're doing, we're, we're starting with our, when building a potting bench, there's so many designs. You might as well, it's not cookie cutter. We're going to start out with the, um, the pieces that you have or you love, like an old window. So we start with what you have, and then we work around that. And, and that's where we build from. Uh, we don't just... I don't tell you to go out and buy a six pane window and go find these things. I want you to find your own things and be super creative. So what we're going to start out with and when we're doing this is these potting benches are great. Unless you're using cedar, they're, I wouldn't say more decorative. I mean, they're beautiful. They are decorative. But most people use these sort of potting benches for on their porches to put their cakes on and their goodies on and, and you know, or potted plants on. If you actually want to leave it outside all winter and really use it as a serious potting bench, sorry, they're cutting wood, um, you want to use cedar. I mean, we're just using using uh, pine. Oh, you're still there, Wendy. Hi. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going to have to phone Claire back to see if there's any more questions. At least we haven't lost our, uh, our, we haven't lost our internet today. So when we're building these, you, the first thing you've got to do is find the materials you want to use and decide where you're going to be using this potting bench. So again, if it's going to be outside, you want to use cedar. I mean, we're in British Columbia. Everything's moldy around here. Everything's green. It's beautiful. But everything gets goes and rots fast. So um, what we're using on this one is pine or SPF, spruce pine fir from uh, the lumber yard. 
and we're not using any cedar here. This is going to get painted and it's going to go on a porch and it's going to be covered during the year and uh, Terry's going to use it for just about anything there is, I guess. And you can actually use it to pot things on. So you've got to find the windows or your insert that you want to use first in the back panel. You don't have to use a window. Um, I've written the whole course and all the variable things you can use. Um, in this, for the purpose of this, this uh, demonstration and stuff, we're using just the window. We're not going to get into adding panels and stuff because that's more technical and it's easy. It's not hard, but we're just going to work with having the windows in between. Now, when you start building your benches, you want to take into account a few things. Where is it going to go and do you have a limitation on the space? And which window are you going to use? You know, obviously the bigger window, the bigger the bench. But if you're trying to fit it into a tight space, you've got to remember that when you are accounting for your 4x4 four four posts, they're not 4x4 four four posts, they're 3.5 inch posts. So you've got to take into account. So if this is 40 inches and you have a smaller space, you, you, you're, with the two posts it's going to be 47 inches. You know, it's not going to be 48 inches, you, you know, if you're trying to make something work. Actually, that would go the other way around. I got that backwards, but it's right anyways. So you want to take into account that, you know, most of us didn't know when we started building that a four and a half inch, a four inch post is actually a three and a half inch post. Um, just like the countertop that Terry's going to be using, the wood is a two by six, but it's not a two by six. It's a one and a half inch by a five and a half inch. They always seem to want things to be bigger than what they actually are. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I think it was a man thing again. But so we want to start out with the materials you've got and where you want to put it. And then we get into start. What I do is, you know, we can draw these up. I draw mine up when I start. But then I end up laying everything out on the ground like I am now, which is a little hard to film. But we lay everything out and see how it's going to look on the ground. So I don't know if that's a corny way of doing it, but I found that's the best way to do it over all these years is lay it out and, and just start picturing it coming together. And it's your potting bench. You can do what you like. You can change it around. Even though you've got your plans done, you can change it around and do whatever you like. So we're going to start laying this one out again so you can start seeing it coming together a bit better again. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we'll put these ones back. Good thing it's not raining. It was actually supposed to rain and now it's not. So be working under a tent. So we're just going to put all our posts back. Terry is putting posts back. Paul's been cutting. We're going to drop this down and we're going to start marking things on the, uh, marking things, marking marks on our posts here. Again, this is just a layup to see how it's all going. Thank you. And then we'll put a board at 36 inch, at 36 inches right now, but we're going to move that board and I'm going to tell you why again in a second. Thanks, Paul. So if we line this one up at 36, just so you know, that's going to be your counter height. Okay, 36 is here. That's your counter height right about here. So this is a back brace here. Now you want to take your back brace and drop it down an inch and a half to account for your other planks that are way wider. I mean way thicker. So we've got to drop this down. So that's our 36. We've got to give it an inch and a half to account for the countertop. So you probably can't see that on there, what I did. But this is our countertop here. This is our brace that's going to hold the countertop up. And you want to drop that brace down a bit because this is your space for your actual countertop in there. So that's why you need to know the thicknesses of everything before you get started. Um, so you can start figuring it all out. So when this, when the countertop is added on here, it's going to sit at 36 inches. So we're going to put this brace, we're going to actually see if we can put this brace in right now. Where's my 36, 34 and a half is where I need it, which is right here. So I think what we might do is we've got this, we've got that, and then if you can pass me another one of those. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> So Terry's opted, I mean, we can put this together here and I'm going to come down four inches here and four inches to there. And the window, how's that looking, Terry? Mm -hmm. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm just going to rotate it forward a bit here for you. So you can see this is what, without looking at me, that's kind of what hers is starting to come together and look like there. So, so the mark we, comes down 
one and a half yeah. inches? Yeah, so this one. Okay, so, so that's what the width of this is. Yeah, the that's the thickness. You okay. want, again, your two by six, which is going to be your countertop, is going to sit on top of this brace um, or backsplash here. And it, again, it says two inches, but it's an inch and a half. So you've got to drop that down an inch and a half. And we want to drop this down four inches. Now, when you start putting these posts on, there's a number of ways of, of doing it. Here, Terry, you can do, Terry's just going to mark that side at 34 and a half. That's got to sit at 34 and a half, and this is down four. And now I lost my train of thought, but that's okay. <laughs> um, we're going to put these on. Now, what you wanted, what we did before um, you guys were on here is Terry spent uh, a couple, about four hours. Was that long, Terry? Yeah. She see. bought rough posts, so she spent a lot of hours sanding. You don't want this stuff looking perfect. If you want a perfect, perfect potting bench, you're going to pay a lot more money for a perfect post that are more furniture grade. And these were posts from Rona. You guys don't have Rona in the States. But Home Depot doesn't carry these. You've got to, you can, Home Depot does carry 4x4s, but they're treated. They're the green ones with the little divot things in it. And I'm afraid that green bleeds through pretty bad in your white paint. So try and track yourself down some 4x4s that, if you're going to paint it, that aren't green and treat it. As it will bleed through on you and uh, you know and or unless you're gonna go with a solid sir a solid cedar potting bench which is gonna cost you a bit of money because cedar is expensive but it is beautiful um, I would stick to painted and I would st stick to not perfect wood so Terry's marked her end and we're just gonna push this in a bit now this is just bracing now what I wanted to go over to um, if you just push that one in a little bit so it butts up the I just wanted to talk to you about messy joints for a minute. This is a brace, so I don't care what this joint looks like. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but because these are rounded over, these joints never fit perfect. Up here, the, these two are going to be seen, and we'll, we'll probably stand these posts up in a minute. This is a bit of a messy joint up here. So what I would actually do is trim the edges off of this. So this three and a half inch might go down to three inches. That way it sits underneath, and I'm going to pull this up so I can show you what a messy joint looks like. Paul, if you hold this one here, we're going to try and get a close-up of a messy joint. And now if I just dip it down a little bit right to here, if you hold that one right there. Thanks. <laughs> Is Paul's uh, arm in the way? And then we hold that there. Look at this. Talk about teamwork. Okay. Can you guys see that? Sort of. Okay, down a bit. I'll go, I'll go up to here. Okay, if that butts up right to there, when you paint that, that's going to look ugly, like totally ugly. It's not going to be a nice joint. It's not going to paint nice because this edge is rounded over. That one's sharp. What you want to do is you want to trim this one back a bit. So even an eighth will help or, or bring it down to a quarter. That gives you a nice joint in there. So this would actually be this way. So instead of having this sit flush right here, on the top where it shows, you want to cut these down a bit so that there's a bit of a reveal in there. I think you guys could see that. Does that make sense, Terry, too? Yeah, does. Wendy, does that make sense? You want to trim these ones down so you don't want messy joints where you can help it. So let's just get rid of that one and we might set up the table saw and make some noise and cut these ones down. We have to bring the table saw out. But we might as well cut these down now. And, uh, and the other thing to talk about quickly before we get into any of this because if we've got a few I can only do this till 11 so it's going to be a long live we might not last that long and then we have to go but so this one because it shows you want this one a nice neat tidy joint this one doesn't matter because it's not going to be seen so those are the things and even when you're placing your window you want your window to sit in the center of this not down at the bottom not up at the top you want it centered and that makes a nice joint there too so everything looks good. You know, you've got a reveal in here. They're called reveals. And you want your window cleaned up. So if there needs any bondoing or cleaning, you want to have your window cleaned up first. And uh, we've got a broken window. We're going to take that in and fix it and pop our window in later. A lot of these windows come broken. So that's where we're at with that. These, and then the other thing um, is that when you go, you can use a Craig jig on these if you own a Craig jig. I don't usually use a Craig jig. I actually don't know how to use it. My friend Claire does, though. And... Uh, I just, what I do is I pre-drill and I countersink and I just drive my screws in from the side. And I think I've got some screws here that we can do this today. I'm pretty sure I brought some. 
but we just wanted to get started on all of this. So again, clean, clean joints where you need them and you pre-drill and we're just going to drive the screws in right through here and we can actually put that together. So if you guys want to go grab a cup of tea in, out there in internet land, we're just going to go and see if I've got screws and we can actually do this today and gather my, um, gather my equipment up so we can get this done and get started on it. So stick around. We're coming back. Go pee. Go have a cup of tea. Make your breakfast and we'll be back in a minute. That's going to look nice, Terry. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we, if we can pull up the table saw, we can trim this, we can trim this one down. Well, we probably don't need to. And then oh. I'll go see if I've got okay. the screws here. Can we, can we, can we, use we can do it in here. You're doing amazing, Terry. <laughs> okay. We'll be back in a minute, guys.
Hi, we're back. We're cutting. Uh oh, something says full. There. We should still be good. Hopefully, we're still here. Are we still on? I think it might have just died on us. Yeah, I might just have to. I think it's still on. I'm just phoning to see if you guys are still on here or not. I think you are. Are we still live? Okay, good. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're just cutting our wood. So everybody, we're cutting our wood. <laughs> okay. Can you hear the table saw going? Okay. Then I have my old table saw because my other one was stolen, remember? So I don't have my good one with me. Um, can you see the see what we're doing again? Okay, I'm gonna hang up now and go get our pieces. We're just cutting them now. Okay, bye. I've got the, I need a square one, this is not going to work. Um, why did you use it like that? Because down here you would get it upside down. And this is actually the same size as the tree trunk. Does that make sense? Because down here it's too big for the trunk. Okay, we're back. Wood's getting cut. Sorry you guys, everything's taking a bit longer today because we're, the shop hasn't been moved here yet and my stuff has been in storage, so we're winging a lot of this. Now, normally I pre-drill everything. I shouldn't say normally, I always do. I pre-drill because these are big screws going in here. I'm just gonna take this screw and I'm just gonna run it right through there. And usually I pre-drill and I can't find my pre-drill bit, so I'm going to just start out with another bit here. And you want to do that just to make it a lot easier. And you always pre-drill your boards, especially thinner ones, so that you're not splitting them. If you don't pre-drill, they can split. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to mark where, where we're going here. And we're going to do this one first. And Paul's got the other board cut down. So we're going to put together the side panel today. And then we're going to hang up on you. <laughs> but you can see how this one's going to fit much nicer. Now we've got a reveal in here, which is going to look so much better. So back to this one here. Time to pre-drill this. I'm just going to carry my mark around. I'm going to pre-drill right there. And I'm just going to flip my post over. So you can't really see this, can you? And then I'm going to flip it over on its side and put it in the other one. So we're just going to do a little pre-drill here with a fatter. I can't find my other one. Now, of course, it's going to get stuck because it's the wrong one. Now, this one's going to keep slipping upon us. Go for it. You've got more muscle than I do. You just got to get it locked in a little bit better. Thank you. Here. Pop this one in for me. That's somebody with a little bit more muscle than I do today. Is that where you want it? Yeah, right there. How deep? This is Paul, by the way. Right there. Hi. <laughs> okay, stop. Good enough. And then we can use a fatter one if you want, if we don't have an actual pre-drill with us, which we will tomorrow. Oh, a counter sink and yes. do the countersink on it so that you use a countersink so that your screws don't stick out and they sink within and you can bondle them afterwards or put a plug in them. But this works just as well yeah. if you don't have the other. There, we just did that a bit. Maybe a bit more. There. See Terry, this, this hole here, if you can see it, that little hole there is sunk in a bit more. So the tip of this, when we drive in this screw, will be buried in there and it good. fits perfect I lucked right out <laughs> we're using what we've got today so Terry <laughs> Terry if she will she can have a chance and what we're gonna do is this board's actually gonna flip over and run into it there but we're gonna start it out on this end and we're gonna give Terry a shot at Terry's not done a lot of building before Terry's done no building before so Terry's gonna give this one a shot so for all you guys who've never even used a screw gun I never used one. Is this a screw gun? What do you call this thing? A yeah, drill, a cordless. screw gun, a cordless drill. There we go. Impactors are better for this. Even I have a up. sore hand today and I can't seem to crank it. There. And you there. want this screw going in straight. There. Okay. Should be good. Okay. Terry, here she goes. <laughs> What you want to do is you want that screw going in straight. So you're going to come up and over it, and you're not just going to ram it in. You're going to just kind of Smooth. go like that, smoothly in and nice. Just make sure. So we'll let you go have it, Terry. So Terry's never done a lot of this before. Terry, you can pull it right down to almost the bottom. You can bring it right up to there, because then we're going to flip it over right and we're going to drive it right up to about there. And just take your time putting it in. Yeah. Just steady pressure, push. And just want to go in straight, right about there. Oops. Yeah, just make, down straight up. Make sure that bit's right in the yeah. hole. Yeah. Yeah. And then that and way we we'll just hold get it steady and just go bit by bit. That's it. Beautiful. This screw. The screws are bent. They bend easily. Yes. These ones. Um. No, I'll just show you right on. Yeah. It keeps. What I usually do is I bring it over like this, and I put a bit of my hand okay. here, a bit of pressure on it, and in I go. I'm not going to do much better of a job than okay. you. Can I play? Yes, you can play. We haven't put it all the way in yet, so... If, if and we're that, not working with perfect bits by any means. Um, can we take it out? Yeah. Here we go. He's going to do it. We're going to get it straightened out again. We're going to take this out because we... This is for that you're a little using, bit more. and it's really hard. So, what we're going to do is... We don't have a skinnier bit. No, we don't have a skinnier bit, so we're just going to have to drive it through. Again, we're down here using whatever we've got because we're not unpacked yet, so... You would like to initially... Just go for it. You've got more uh, oomph than I do today. Okay, Terry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bit more. Bit more. Bit more. Okay. And we'll flip this one over. And we'll line it up with our post. Let's put it back up to the 36 here. And that should be, let's, where's the measuring tape? I'll grab the measure. Here we go. Thank and we're just going to drive it in from the side if we can. 
we need our, our proper workbench set up, but again, is that at 34 and a half? Mm -hmm. Looks like it. 34 and a half. Yeah, as long as we get the other side maybe down a little touch. There we go. Now we're going to drive it in from the side. Okay, I'll hold this and you drive it in from there. Um, the old glance come down a bit more right okay, there. Okay, hold on. i got to get out of the way here. That's okay. Um, then you just have to stand on it. I have to stand on it. Yeah. This is the, usually I use my clamps, you guys, for this, and I clamp it together. It makes it a lot easier. This is great for group parties. This is, yeah, a group party <laughs> here. Again, nothing set up so we're winging it. it and an there. impactor works so much better. But I think everybody should have one. He's See? almost got it. Again, you want to pre-drill this, and we just didn't get a chance to pre-drill it. We don't have all our stuff here. So we may have to redo it tomorrow. We will. You got it. Just a little bit more. It'll be good. No, it's going to strip the... Yeah. Uh, this metal is not good. No. And it doesn't accommodate anything quite like this. It needs to uh, be pre-drilled. Yeah, it's definitely pre-drilled. So if you don't pre-drill, they get a little hard to put in. So we've got it in a little bit there. So you can see how this one is flush and it's good. So we use this to kind of uh, pre-drill it a little bit. And this, which was not a hot idea. Again, we're down here with nothing at the lake. So we're... I don't know how people built houses in the old days when they didn't even have this stuff. <laughs> We'd be more just intending this in. So again, this one will pop in. Then our window is going to sit up a little bit here. And this is going to drop a little bit there. Now, the thing to point out, when we're set up here, we're coming back on Friday. We're going to be back on Friday, and we're going to go over all this again and be set up properly. But we really want to just get a jump start on this. Um, not on the ground and not missing half our tools. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. So when you're building these, you, you definitely want to pre-drill. These, these boards are hard, and when you're using old lumber, they're even harder. So you want to pre-drill and countersink all the time. We don't have the right size bits down here today. I couldn't find them in all the boxes, so we'll have that for Friday. Um, this one's flush. When you go to do these, when we go to do these sorts on, on Friday, we're going to put little jigs and little blocks of wood underneath things to hold it in place so that I'm not trying to hold this window while I'm trying to ram in a screw. And uh, the same with this. There's a bit of a reveal here, but it'll be even less because it's going to be have a reveal on the other side too. So what are we going to do on Friday? We're going to finish putting this together because we're going to start running out of time here. Finish putting this together. We'll put the front framework together in two hours. And I think we're coming back Saturday. Are you okay Saturday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Friday we're going to be back because we're both busy tomorrow. Friday we're going to come back. We're going to finish putting this together. We're going to do the front one together. Um, we're going to put the sides, the brackets. We're going to get this built over the weekend. So we're going to be back kind of winging this <laughs> down here um, Friday, Saturday, and possibly Sunday. We'll see how far we get. But we're going to have this potting bench together this weekend. And for those that are interested, we're going to be here, <laughs> say, 9 o'clock on Friday morning. So I know, Wendy, I'll have to go over some more stuff with you, but at least this will give you an idea of what you need and what you don't need and uh, what you want to run out and buy. Definitely go and get yourself a, uh, <laughs> a pre-drill bit. And this was and, a good thing that happened Yeah, because you can see, Paul's pointing out that this not going in very well is a good thing that happened because you can see what it happens. Friday, uh, we'll have all the proper tools, and then you'll be able to see the right way and an easier way for you so you don't have to go through just what you just saw just yeah. now. You're gonna, it's just going to keep, it's going to, what will happen is if I put this in any farther, it's going to strip, and then you're going to have a hell of a time getting it back out. So when, I, when I'm in my workshop doing this by myself, I'm on a big workbench. I have clamps. I'll put a brace down there because sometimes I have to use all my force to get this thing in when I, because I was always building out of old lumber, and it's tough. So again, you want, you know, it's always nice to have an extra set of hands. If you're by yourself, it's clamps, and you make a lot of jigs. And uh, you don't want to be stripping screws in this stuff because it is hard. So yeah, I guess we're going to leave everybody right now and... and uh, Go keep unpacking so we can do a better job of this on Friday. And uh, you guys have a good day. And we might pop on back on later if we do get a little bit more done. Okay, so from Paul and Terry and Cheryl, this is your, your professional workout for the morning. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. As we press finish. Hi, everyone. It's Cheryl from the Guild of Daisy. I don't know who's around. It's about 8 o'clock, uh, what are we at, Saturday night up here in Vancouver Island. 
and I just wanted to share with you the IOD um, image transfers I've been working on and one of the uh, what do you call it just like our traditional uh, gesso transfer and uh, so again if you I, this is a stuff are you still there sorry it keeps cutting out say hi if you're here again I'll try this one more time it's Cheryl from the Gilded Daisy here I want to talk to you about the IOD transfers today and the regular gesso transfers so I said I was going to do a tutorial on the IOD transfers but I'm still working on the uh, on these transfers too so I thought I'd show you a blend of them um, these are what the IOD transfers look like when they come they are absolutely gorgeous they're the IOD transfers and they are beautiful so I'm kind of squished in here I'll grab a few other things here for you they are so easy to use when you get them this is what they look like sorry I'll pull this up here this is what they look like when you open up and you unroll them that's what they look like they're absolutely gorgeous they are just beautiful so when you unroll them there's two pieces of paper in there this one you can discard this obviously is your transfer and it's just ink I think it's actually heated on here but that's the back there and seriously you guys this is so easy you just rub them on so you just separate the two papers they just come undone super easy and you get rid of it this one here I've already been using I've cut part of it out and that part that I cut out I've actually applied on top of my regular transfer um, I'll put a picture of this this is my uh, mannequin that was done by a beautiful artist and there was just these weird little blobs here that I wouldn't call them weird um, they just didn't match with the rest of it after I transferred it um, they're supposed to be moss and there was another big one here and I thought why not cut out one of these flowers and put them on and it worked you know how it is suddenly you're not too sure if it's something's gonna work or not you're like stressing right out worried it's not gonna work and it did work I put one up here and I put one down there now these are as I said so easy let me just show you another one here this is a uh, sorry I'm cutting in front of you there here's another one here they're gorgeous and I was just going to show you um, cutting one out and applying it and just how easy it is so again two papers and one of the things you want to make sure you do is if you're not using them or you've cut parts of it out put it back because if you get dust on the uh, back side of the paper like I'll show you here if you get dust here it is here this one's been cut cut apart a few times so if you get dust on this part here the back part it doesn't stick very well it it, it just doesn't sorry I'm sitting down here the I did it on the yellow uh, armoire and badge and I was like why is this coming off well it was very dusty our robe was really dusty and it got all over the back of it and I kind of wet it down and it stuck so I guess I was lucky <laughs> it worked but I just wanted to show you how super 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 easy it is to do these I've got my scissors here somewhere and I was thinking that I would add a rose here you know over that uh, white blob so again here we are with this beautiful transfer I was trying to think which one I should add on to here again you just cut these apart and use them wherever you want them I've, if you go onto my uh, Gilded Daisy site, you can see a couple of things I've been playing around. I've only had them for a couple of weeks, and they are amazing. So I was going to add another one up in here, and uh, I'll just cut this out so you can see what I'm doing here. I did a clock. I'm waiting for the clock hands to come. And uh, what else did I do? I did the bed, and I did the dresser, and I've got a sign that might go over top of this one. So you've got to be kind of careful with these, but I'm just, see, just cutting this out. You're meant to cut them out and kind of arrange them and do things with them. I can hardly wait till they have some new designs because, I mean, it is endless what you can do, especially if you start blending them. Let me just get this one cut out here. So, there it is there. It's not the best setup here. We've been sanding the porch down today trying to get it finished. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? There's the rest of that one. And I still have, whoopsie, another one upside down here. And there's that one. So I'm just going to spend a minute or two cutting these out. 
I was going to cut them out before you guys got here, but then you wouldn't see what they look like when you actually open them up. I see there's a couple comments there. I'll get up close in a minute and have a quick look. Again, if you're just joining us, or if you're in the replay, because right now it's Saturday night up here on Vancouver Island, and let me just get this done here. can't talk and cut at the same time. I'm not that multitasky. So there's this one. And that's similar to the one that I added up here. And there's this gorgeous one. I might have to adjust the camera so you can see up close and see what's going on. So that one's beautiful. And this one here. So what I was going to do originally was just do a plain transfer and just transfer it onto board and show you guys. And that was kind of boring. I mean, it was just too easy. You would just see me sit there and rub and that would be super boring. So I thought I might as well, I, I had this transfer that I did with gesso, if you want a regular way of doing transfers. And again, there was just this two kind of things here that I wasn't overly keen on. It's a beautiful piece of artwork, but I just wasn't doing anything with it because I just wasn't keen on it. So let's see. I'm going to add one of these. I'm just going to try and play around with this. I could add one there. And let's see. These ones would actually tie into the bottom. I don't know if you can see down there. Those would look gorgeous down there. So why don't I turn one of these upside down? If you guys, when I did this, I just took a, a chance to see what would happen. And when I first put the transfer on here, I was like freaking out. I thought I've screwed this up. This is looking kind of flat because there's no finish on it yet. But this one was part of this one here, this leaf I added in. So this one here actually fit dead on with those roses that were there. I'll do a before and after of this and you'll see what I mean. Um, I'm gonna get down here and I hope you can see down here. I just used some green tape, I had some around. And I think I'm gonna add a couple of these roses. Maybe I'll drop one down here. Can you see what I'm doing here? Maybe I'll drop that rose right into this kind of spot here, right there. I think I'll drop that rose. Ooh, maybe I'll drop that one instead. I'm just going to drop it in there as if it was had already been there. Here's my crinkly tape because I don't know what I did with my other tape. Half a sec there. I'll just undo this tape. You kind of want to use painter's tape. If I get up, I might knock everything down to hold it in place while you do the transfer. So I think I'm going to try and do... Just give me a minute while I look around here and just make sure this is where I actually want it. Sometimes it takes me a minute to get it figured out. But I think those might look really, really pretty down there. Let's see, maybe this way. I'm not too sure. Let's see. I don't want to rush and screw it up, so you have to bear with me for a minute. Or do I put that one over on that side there? Now, I think this one's going to have to go here. Okay. I'm going to put that one right there. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to put my tape up here if it still sticks. Let's see. Is it going to stick or not? So this funny little thing here comes in the box. I can kind of see the comments. Um, oh, hi, Darwin. I can't see who else is there. Anyways, hi, you guys. Anyways, I'm going to put this one right here. Basically, I'm taking this, and I know this is going to be hard for you to see, and I'm just going to rub it. Like, seriously, you guys, it's this easy. I hope you can see me down here. I'm just going to rub it with this, and what you do is you kind of lift and see. See, it's still there. I'm just going to do this one quickly. Sometimes it takes a minute for it to sort of pop, but you'll be able to see it start coming off the paper. Yeah, it's getting there. Leave a comment and let me know how many of you have done these before, as they are pretty super. And I don't want this one here on there. I want this one here. So I don't want that one. I want this one. So I don't rub that one. You just rub exactly what you want. And you can narrow it right in. Like I can get right in there. Let's see. And uh, it will just stay. it's coming off I think you can see a little bit of that under there I'll have to do a close-up later for you and put that back up there my tape will hold somewhat 
this will make me crazy, but that's all right. I'll just have to hold on to it. So it's starting to come off now. I'll do another one of these tomorrow on the sign I'm doing, and that'll be a lot easier to see. Again, and if you, if your tape falls off and you lose your place, you just line it back up again. Math a sec. So I'll make sure I, I'm just going to double check and make sure I want these leaves, which I do. Again, when you get them, you're going to break them apart and use them in different configurations. I hope you guys can hear me okay. But again, I'm doing an IOD stencil on top of, I mean, an IOD transfer on top of one of my own transfers by an artist down in Peru. I mean, these are so easy. I don't know how many times I can say that, but they sure are. Let me just get that one on there. And then I'll do a close-up after this so you can see. I mean, the drawback with these sort of ones is that you, there's only so many designs. They've got to come up with more. I mean, I'm already going crazy for more. I would love more. And then you're stuck. But if you can incorporate them with other designs that you're doing, they sure turn out beautiful. But this one's coming off super nice. I just want to make sure again, see I just get into these little corners here. I just, I don't want this one coming off. I will just want the one below it. And it is coming off. I can see that I've got a little bit of green left here. And you just keep lifting it and seeing what's going on. There's still a tiny bit of leaf left there. But I'm gonna do another one tomorrow that'll be a lot clearer for you if you're not quite seeing what's going on here. A little bit more in the center. So again, these are IOD stencils on, t I mean, IOD transfers, I don't know why I keep saying that, on top of uh, a traditional transfer. I just wanted to add some more flowers to this. It was a pretty busy picture, so I thought if I add more, it might give it a little bit more depth. A little bit more right there. Because these are super, super easy. Half a second, just the odd tiny little green bit there. Done. See? Can you see it? That's how easy it is, you guys. Hey, and that turned out really nice down there. Oh, I get too old for this, my knees. But see, it came off where it used to be. It used to be, you can actually see it on here where it was. That flower used to be here. Now it's down there. I'll have to do a close-up of this for you. But that's about it. You just take these and you rub them with this or a credit card or something. I'm gonna figure out another one to put down there and I'll probably add another one down there and I just keep playing around with them and, and seeing where it's the best place for them to go. But again, you just, you can put them wherever you like. They double up on top of each other. And I wish I could read these comments. I'll have to read them later. At least there's a few of you still here. That's great. But again, tomorrow, I will do uh, another demonstration with uh, a sign that I'm making. And if you want, go back to the Gilded Daisy, well, there's a couple of things. You can go back to the Gilded Daisy uh, page and you'll be able to see where I use these roses on a clock that I'm working on. I'm waiting for the hands to come in. And uh, you can also see the armoire that I did with the uh, wildflower botanicals. And unfortunately, the wildflower botanicals are sold out right now. Everywhere is sold out. It's like crazy. They're sold out because they are gorgeous. <laughs> um, that's why they're sold out. So again, these ones are the roses. I think I keep saying again too much, but that's okay. I think I'm tired. <laughs> um, and I'll show you what else I'm going to do this tomorrow because I've been painting over top of this. So this was the gesso stencil. These are the IODs and I lucked out with this. Um, these flowers down here, if you can see them, they're white. I turned them to pink. So I, I painted over these pink ones. I added some of these, these kind of dots here were kind of like these ones here. And I added some paint into those. I'm just trying to add, give a pop of red back in to kind of compensate for the reds that are going back in there. So I don't know, I'll have to answer your questions later on. And, uh, and I'll do another one of these tomorrow. I keep saying that too. But tomorrow I will do a, an easy one that's up close that you can actually see what I'm doing. 
and uh, I just wanted to show you the variety that you can do with these. Wait till I get into the stamps. That's just going to be crazy. Stamps and molds and, and traditional transfers and super easy transfers. And uh, I'll say good night to you guys. And I will see you tomorrow. And thanks for watching. And sorry for being so late, but this is just how easy they are. Okay, bye guys.